Hello everyone, Recapped Mystery here, welcome back. Today I'm going to explain an action, drama, sci-fi movie named, About Time. Watch out and take care. The Lake family lives in peace at their seaside home. There's the always busy mother, Mary the always busy father, James the charming yet absent-minded uncle, Esmond the awkward son, Tim and the free-spirited daughter, Catherine or Kit Kat. They throw a New Year's Eve party with family and friends every year. A Tim navigates the mob at this year's celebration, feeling embarrassed and dragged around. During the countdown to the new year, Polly, a female he's been dancing with, goes in for a kiss, but he shakes her hand instead, disappointing her. Tim wakes up the next day, overcome with embarrassment and a horrible hangover. Tim is then informed by his father, James, that he is about to reveal a family secret to him. According to James, the men born into their family, including Tim, have the ability to travel back in time, but only during their own lives. They cannot return to a history or a location they have never been. To do so, they must go to a dark spot, such as a large cupboard, and ponder about the location and Tim, predictably, believes this is a comedy. He shakes his head at his father, convinced that he is playing him. Last night was a party. He emerges from the closet after a few seconds and is astonished to discover himself clothed and he goes down and is immediately drawn by. Jay, escaping a previously knocked over table Tim then returns to the closet and travels to the present. Realizing that time travel is real, he listens to his father's experience with it, finding that it's how James appeared to have so much time for them. James tells Tim not to utilize his ability for money or power. Thus Tim decides to ignore James' advice. Kit Kat invites her boyfriends, Jay cousin, Charlotte, to stay at the beach house five that summer. One afternoon, as the family sunbathes with their visitor, Tim wishes to be on Charlotte's list. Tim sees an opportunity and agrees to apply sunscreen to Charlotte's back, but ends up spilling the bottle on her. Feeling humiliated, he travels back in time and acts more casually and deliberately about the situation. Tim tries and fails to impress Charlotte throughout the summer until it is too late. Finally, Charlotte's last day in the house arrives. Tim plans to reveal his affections for her the night before she goes, but is shot down before he can because Kit Kat has already warned Charlotte that this may be her last night at their home. Tim goes back in time to confess to Charlotte during the summer. Charlotte, on the other hand, advises him to ask her again about her last night at their house. This proves that he had no chance with Charlotte, no matter what. Tim leaves their home the day after Charlotte leaves and relocates to London, where he lives with his brother. Tim is looking forward to the next chapter of his life, but is saddened to hear that Harry is a short-fused dramatist. Tim hasn't had much luck with romance in the first six months, discovering that his job as a lawyer exposes him largely to other males. When Jay takes him to Don's Lenoir, the restaurant where they're here, they are seated next to a woman named Mary and her friend, Joanna. Tim and Mary having a terrific time getting to know one another in the dark. Tim and Jay finally meet the girls in person after supper. Tim is taken aback when he sees Mary, and it's clear that sparks fly when the couple looks at each other. Before they part ways, she gives him her phone number. Tim returns home with a spring in his step, only to be greeted by Harry's enraged growl. His play's opening was marred when the principal actor forgot his lines. Tim returns back in time to join Harry in the theater right before opening night, hoping to make things better. He approaches Tom, the star actor, and persuades him to practice his lines. This works for a while, but then another performer forgets his lines. Tim travels back in time to assist him. The performance is a success. When Tim checks his phone, he notices that Mary's phone number has vanished. His time travels had obliterated his romantic evening with Mary. Tim, dejected, joins an overjoyed Harry for breakfast the next day. Tim discovers an ad for a Kate Moss exhibition in the city after Harry distributes the newspaper. He spends the week at the show, expecting to run across Mary, who is a lover of Kate Moss. Mary finally steps in after a week, and Tim approaches her warily. However, their contact is strained and he discovers that Mary now has a boyfriend named Rupert. Tim discovers that Mary and Rupert met at Joanna's. He learns about the celebration and travels back in time to prevent it from happening. Tim arrives at Joanna's flat and persuades Mary to accompany him to the party before Rupert arrives. Mary is reluctant, 
but she feels a magnetic force attracting her to him, as they walk away, they pass Rupert, who inadvertently walks past his rumored future girlfriend, meanwhile, the two enjoy a nice evening together during which they get to know each other even better, Tim ultimately walks Mary home, and she asks him to her flat, they take the date to the bedroom as the mood heats up. Tim has an unpleasant first sexual encounter with Mary after clumsily stumbling over her shoes and having problems unclipping her bra. He chooses to return to the past, but this time he skips over Mary's shoes and rapidly undresses. Tim's many attempts fail, and the pair has the perfect first night of passion. Their relationship blossoms over the next few months, and the couple finally moves in together. Tim meets Charlotte while at the theater with a co-worker named Rory but the conversation rapidly becomes awkward. He tries again, but this time it doesn't go as well, and he decides not to approach her for the third time, and instead, Charlotte notices him and initiates the conversation. Charlotte invites him to supper and expresses guilt for previously declining him. Tim declines Charlotte's request to walk her to her flat and to hide with her. Tim realizes how much he loved Mary after being able to reject his first love. He dashes back home and wakes her up to propose. It doesn't turn out to be as romantic as he had hoped, so he does it again. She says yes the second time. Tim takes Mary home to meet his parents that summer. Tim spends quality time with his father and Mary gets along with her mother, Kit Kat, to his astonishment has returned home after spending a pound five in London. When Tim and Mary's wedding and pregnancy are announced, the Lake family is overjoyed. Despite the fact that it rained during the ceremony and reception, their wedding ceremony is packed with passion and humor. The tent is ripped and blown away by the storm, forcing everyone to seek shelter and Liam goes back in time and switches his best man when Rory, Harry, and Jane mess up their speeches until he ultimately selects his father, Posey, their daughter, is born many months later. Tim is captivated by the experience of raising a child, both for its lovely moments and its challenges. Posey's first birthday approaches as they move into a new home. All of the guests, including Harry and Rory, arrive, but Kit Kat is late. Tim answers the door, but instead of Kit Kat, it's her troubled boyfriend. He and Kit Kat argued earlier that day which resulted in Kit Kat driving alone. Kit Kat had been drinking earlier in the day, which caused her automobile to wreck on the way to Tim's house. Tim goes back in time, hoping to save her, and instead picks her up from her house. However, this does not address the problem. Kit Kat has a drinking problem as a result of her miserable relationship with Jimmy. Tim chats to his sister in the hopes of reaching out to her. When that fails, he transports Kit Kat back to the New Year's Eve party where she met Jimmy. Instead of flirting with Jimmy, she vents her rage on him and strikes him, despite the fact that he does not remember her and this version. When the siblings return to the present, Kit Kat realizes she has feelings for Jay. This time, she dates Jay instead of Jimmy, and their relationship works out better. Tim returns home after saving his sister's life and happiness only to discover that he has a son instead of his daughter, Bozy. His heart collapses as a result of the startling realization. He immediately climbs into a cabinet and travels back in time to when his kid was born in order to speak with James. James admits that any changes he makes before his child is born are likely to result in the conception of a different child. He can never change anything that happened before Posey was born if he wants to keep her. Unable to face the loss of his daughter, Tim travels back in time to undo the changes he made to Kit Kat's life and causes her automobile accident. Tim and Mary stay by Kit Kat's side in the hospital until she heals. Their encouragement inspires Kit Kat to make a positive change in her life. When she starts seeing him, she remembers the parallel timeline. Tim enjoys having his daughter with him when he returns home from the hospital. Their joy motivates him to have another child, despite Mary's initial objections. They have their son two years later. Tim assists Mary in preparing to see her company's best-selling author one evening, but they leave Posey below, where she destroys the manuscript from Mary's office. Tim wants to use time travel to remedy everything, but their night is cut short when his mother calls to tell him that James has terminal cancer. Tim, Mary, and Kit Kat pay a visit to Tim's father's beach cottage. They can't cure his cancer without jeopardizing Tim and Kit Kat's lives. Finally, time travel cannot solve all of life's problems. 
James teaches Tim a far more crucial lesson for their ability. The first is to live life as normally as possible, with all of its stresses and problems. Second, after experiencing the day for the first time, he should go back and recall events from his past, focusing on how sweet the world may be. Tim takes his advice and finds satisfaction in both the ordinary and extraordinary aspects of his life. However, there are other days he would rather forget, such as the day his father died. Tim, unwilling to say goodbye, travels back in time to see his father while he is still in good condition. Tim feels reassured by the fact that he may still visit his father back in time whenever he misses him after James' death. Mary, on the other hand, decides she wants a third kid one day. Tim hesitates, knowing that having a third kid will make it impossible for him to visit his father. He thinks long and hard before letting go of the past and moving forward. He then consents to having another child. Mary is now extremely pregnant and due to give delivery shortly. Tim's last chance to see his father in the past has passed. He travels back in time to play one more game of table tennis with his father. When James notices Tim's anguish in his eyes, he realizes that this is their last time together. He accepts this and expresses his support for his son's decision. As a reward, they both fly back in time to Tim's childhood. James and Tim run and play on the beach for the last time, both in better health and with more vitality. Tim bids his father farewell and returns to the current day, where his third kid is born. Years pass, and Tim goes about his daily existence, laughing and crying with his family. He has completed his family with Mary, while Kit Kat also has a child with a boy. He lets Mary sleep in one morning and cooks breakfast for his children, savoring their presence. Tim resolves never to time travel again, preferring to live each day as if it were the second time he's lived. This time, he concentrates on appreciating life, from major events to minor nuances. Subscribe for more videos, and also turn on notification. Thank you for watching. See you again soon.